my name is Jonathan Hicks. We're doing enlargements. Now an enlargement is one of the four kinds of transformations. So it's the geometry topic here, we're messing around with shapes. I've done a transformations overview video where I talk about the four different transformations briefly, but in this video I'm going to give you the details of how you do enlargements. So an enlargement, as the name implies, means that the shape is getting bigger, although rather confusingly the shape can get smaller sometimes as well. We're going to need a couple of examples for this, and I'm going to do my examples on a set of axes. So give me a minute to draw up some axes, and then I'll show you the example. All right, here's a set of axes, and I've drawn a triangle on it here. Now, in order to specify how you do an enlargement, there's a couple of things you need to say. So for any enlargement, in general, First of all, you need to say what the scale factor is. The scale factor is how much bigger it gets, or as I say, possibly smaller. So if the scale factor is two, that means the triangle is gonna get bigger and all the lengths will end up being twice as big. If the scale factor were three, then all the lengths would end up being three times as big. If the scale factor were a half, then all the lengths would end up being half as big and that's how a triangle or any shape can end up getting smaller with an enlargement. It's a bit of a misleading name as I say but the scale factor is the thing that controls it. So a scale factor bigger than one, that's multiplying it, it's going to get bigger but if the scale factor is smaller than one like a half it means it's going to get smaller because all the lengths will be half as long. So that's the first thing you need and the second thing you need to specify is what's known as the center of enlargement. Now, very often when they give you an enlargement question, they will specify the origin, that's the point where the two axes cross, the zero on both axes. They'll often specify the origin is the center of rotation, uh, sorry, center of enlargement. Now, if that's the case, it makes doing the enlargement much easier. Uh, and I'm going to show you two different ways of doing this. If the center of enlargement is the origin, then there's a very quick and easy way to do the enlargement. If it's not the origin though, you have to go the long way around, there's a more difficult way you have to deal with it. So I'll show you both of these. Uh, but before we do that, we need to know the coordinates of the shape. Now sometimes they won't give you the shape, they'll just give you a set of coordinates. So if we say that our coordinates are going to be 1, 1, 1, 2, and 3, 1. So 1, 1, remember it's x first, y second. So one in the x and then one in the y, that's the bottom left corner there, that's one comma one. One comma two means one to the right and two up, so that's the top left corner. And three comma one, it's three in the x, one in the y, that means three to the right and one up, so that's the bottom right corner. So these three coordinates here are the coordinates of the three corners of the shape. Now, if the center of enlargement is the origin, then whatever the scale factor is, so let's imagine we have a scale factor of two for our first one. So everything's gonna get twice as big. As long as the center is the origin, you just times all of your coordinates by the scale factor. So in this case, instead of one and one, you're gonna get two comma two. One comma two would become two comma four, and three comma one would become six comma two. Yeah, each of the numbers has just become twice as big because the scale factor is three uh, is two. If the scale factor were three, they would become more three times as big. And then you just plot the points. So we've got two comma two. So you go to two, two. That's going to be one point there. Two comma four. Two four is up here. And six comma two. Six comma two is going to be here. You join up your three points and you get your enlarged triangle. And all the lengths on this triangle will be twice as long as they are on the original triangle because the scale factor is two. So that's the easy way. You just take the coordinates, times them by the scale factor. And that will work for any shape at all, as long as you know the coordinates of the corners. But only if the center of enlargement is the origin. Now if the center of enlargement is not the origin, you have to use a completely different method. But as I say, most of the time you will find the center is the origin. So let me show you the other method. Uh, yeah, well, I'll leave those coordinates there so we can compare them later. Um, 
and I'm going to leave the center of enlargement as the origin, but I'm going to show you the other methods so you can compare them. Essentially, what you have to do is, with a ruler, draw a straight line from the origin through each corner of the shape and then off into the distance. So, if you've got one corner here, as I say, you draw a straight line from there through there and then whoosh, off into the distance. The same thing with this corner. So from the origin, from the center of enlargement, through that shape, off into the distance. And then finally, through that corner there. More or less like that. So you draw lines through each corner of the shape. So if it's a square, you'd be drawing four lines. Because I've got three corners, I'm drawing three lines. Then with a ruler, you have to measure the distance from your center of enlargement to each corner of the shape. So let's imagine that you measured from here to here and it turned out to be 3.2 centimeters. You then, so you do that for all three, but then whatever that distance is, you have to times that distance by the scale factor. Now you might need to do that on a calculator if the distances aren't working out to be nice whole numbers. In this case, if we times it by two, you're gonna get 6.4. So you then measure 6.4 centimetres from the centre of enlargement again along the line that you've drawn here. If the scale factor is 2, that distance will be twice as far as the original distance. Yeah, because you're timesing it by 2, so it will be twice as far. So I obviously don't have a ruler here, but just roughly speaking, twice the distance is going to put you about there. So again, you'd measure that distance, you double it, which is going to take us to about here. You measure this distance, you double it, which is going to take us to about here. That gives you your three points, and then you join them up to make your new enlarged triangle. And if you've done this accurately, then you'll find the coordinates will be exactly the same as if you'd used the other method. So the first one should be at 2, 2. So this point, yeah, 2, 2, 2, 4. So 2, 4, yeah, that looks good. And then 6, 2, so 6, 2, more or less, that's all right. Obviously, if you do this on graph paper, you can make this very accurate and you'll have your coordinates in exactly the right point. But that's the method you need to use if the center is not the origin. I'll give you another example of this in a second. So you draw your lines to each corner of the shape, measure the distance to each corner, and then times it by the scale factor. So if the, dis if the scale factor is 2, whatever that distance is, you're doubling it, which will take you to here. So whatever that distance is, you're doubling it, which takes you to here. All right, give me a moment to rub this out. I'll draw another example on, and this time we're going to pick a different center of enlargement, not the origin. All right, so I've got a square now, and this time I'm choosing the center of enlargement to be this point here. So as a coordinate, our center, put it right at here, is going to be 4 comma 0. It's 4 in the x direction and nothing in the y direction. So we go 4 to the right and then we don't go up or down, nothing in the y direction. So that's where the center of enlargement is going to be. And if they give you a center that's not the origin, they'll usually tell you what the center is as a coordinate. You need to find where it is on your axes and then mark that point. Now, you can't do the thing about doubling the coordinates here. It's not going to work. Um, so the first thing you're going to need to do is through each corner of the shape, you need to draw a straight line. This time I should say the scale factor, I'm not going to use two, I'm actually going to use a half. So we're going to make the square get smaller this time. So step one, from the center of enlargement, straight line through each corner of the shape. So something like that, and you extend it off into the distance, that was that corner, this corner then, like so, this corner, and this corner, more or less. Again, you measure the distance from the center to the first corner, and you times that distance by the scale factor. So this time, instead of taking that distance and doubling it to here, we're going to take that distance and we're going to halve it. So the, the new point, the new corner of the square, will end up half of the way to the old corner, the original corner. So in this case, I'll just do this by eye. Half of that distance is going to put you about there. 
this point from the centre, you measure that distance times it by a half, you're going to end up about there. This distance, halve it, and then this distance, and halve it, you end up about there. Those are your four new points. You join them up, and more or less, you've got a square, which is smaller than the original square. And in fact, all the lengths of this square will be half as big as they were on the original square. The square, this new enlarged, although really it's smaller, square is overlapping the old square and that can happen. So don't worry if it overlaps the original. It can also just join up so it ends up touching one of the sides. That's fine as well. It really doesn't matter. But that's how you would do something where it gets smaller and in particular where the centre is not the origin. Right, I'm just going to do one more example for a situation that often catches people out and then we'll finish. So give me a minute to rub this one out. Alright, so I've gone back to the original triangle now. Uh, the scale factor this time, I'm going to say, is going to be 3. But the centre of enlargement here is going to be 1, 1. So let's find 1, 1 on the axes. From the origin, you go 1 to the right and 1 up. It's actually the bottom left corner of the shape. So that point there is going to be our centre of enlargement. So, it's not the origin, so you've got to draw your lines from the centre through the first corner of the shape. This line is actually going to go along the side of the triangle and then off into the distance. So you're just kind of extending the triangle upwards like that. This corner from here, again you're just going to be extending this line all the way along. And then, in fact, if we're doing it at scale factor 3, you might need a bit more than that. And then this point here, well, if the point you want to draw the line through is where the centre of enlargement is, then the line doesn't go anywhere. It kind of goes through that point and just stays there. Oops. So, if the centre of enlargement is on one of the corners of the shape, you don't need to draw a line through that corner. Now we do the enlargement. So scale factor 3. So you measure the distance from the centre to your first corner, whatever that is, you times it by 3. So that would be 1, 2, 3. Yet the new distance needs to be 3 times bigger than the old distance was. So that's going to be about there. So this corner, so it's going to be 1, 2, 3. That's going to take you to here. And this one, again, if the centre is on the corner, the corner doesn't move anywhere. It will remain fixed because it's kind of going that way, if you like. It can't go out in any other direction. So that's actually going to be the same corner for your new shape as it was for the original shape. So your triangle then has got three corners. It's got that corner, that corner, and this corner. So we join them up. Well, that's already joined, and that's already joined, so we just need a big line from there to there, like so. So my new triangle, that's all the lengths are three times bigger than the original, actually lies bang on top of the old one. And in fact, this corner is exactly the same. So do be careful with this, that can catch people out. It's actually quite easy to do once you realise how it works, but if you have the centre of enlargement on one of the corners of your shape, that's how you're going to deal with it. So just be careful with that.